Mm. We still, we still have four minutes. Yeah, four minutes because the, um, I think okay. the number of attendees is increasing now. The numbers are going up. Yeah. 99 so far. 100. That's good. I guess uh, you're still on fast, right? You're still fasting. Don't break your fasting yet. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
world university rank subjects including sports mining engineering and nursery are recognized as exponentially strong and help secure the university place among the top canadian and global universities at the end of today's meeting there will be a session for question and answer if you have any questions Please write it down in the chat box. Now we are pleased to have Mr. Hisham Ahmed, the General Director of uh, Dispatch and Academic Supervision Department, Central Department of Egyptian Mission affiliated to the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research in Egypt, who will present to us the Egyptian State Plan for Grants and Mission. Welcome, Mr. Hisham. The floor is yours. Uh Okay, Dr. Ahmed, thank you very much for uh, having this uh, great webinar with uh, one of the uh, uh, most valuable uh, universities in Canada. Uh, we have a long history with Alberta University. We have a lot of uh, our participants. They already um, uh, having uh, more than 25 uh, Egyptian uh, scholars uh, with different uh, specialties. Uh, let me share first with you my presentation. Dr. Ahmad, if you can, you just let me co-sharing with you. Okay. Let's get it's fine. Okay, um, as you know, the Central Department of Mission uh, main role is to design and organize announcement um, annually after authenticating from CDM Executive Committee. Uh, CDM Executive Committee is the main uh, committee that control all mission departments and the funds uh, and distribution of grants all over um, our public universities as well as our public uh, research centers. CDM announced twice, once in the late January and the other one in late June. And the scholarship specialists are planned upon the priority of areas that will impact on the Egyptian economic groups. Usually there is a general meeting in the Chief CDM committee, uh, along with the Supreme Council of Universities uh, to decide what main priority areas that we are dealing annually. CDM second part, uh, current announcement, main facts. The scholarship types that we uh, fund now, uh, we fund the full scholarship for PhD up to four years. We can fund also uh, one year channel system scholarship, which is joint supervision. We can also uh, fund up to six months postdoctorate scholarship and up to two years master degree scholarship. So if we divided these two programs, we have the certificate programs, which contain the master degree as well as the PhD. However, we also encourage uh, the joint supervision system or the channel system, as well as the postdoctorate uh, scholarship with non-degree program. The scope of our scholarship this announcement, we are targeting uh, 10 main access or main core uh, fields that we are uh, requiring uh, to have uh, participants. Um, so we are targeting first of all the energy, which includes the College of Engineering, uh, Science, and all this affiliated with the research of the pairing solar and the bioenergy. Also, we are targeting the water resource uh, fields. We are targeting the medical and health science, which includes medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, nursing, uh, physical surgery, and related all the related fields. 
We are targeting agriculture and nutrition science. We are targeting the environment, faculty of science, engineering, urban planning, and other related um, fields. Also, we are targeting strategic industry techniques and the information communication and space technology. Uh, also, we are targeting, and this is very important um, field, the education and learning development, uh, which is having more focusing nowadays uh, in the Egyptian uh, uh, mission department. And also, of course, we are very interested in investment, trade and transport fields, and social and humanities uh, science also. So what's the timeline, our timeline currently? So we already announced this um, uh, second part announcement uh, on March 21st, 2021. That was the announcement start date. The deadline will be May 30, 2021, as to give more chances for our participants or our scholars uh, to shop around and uh, try to pursue their uh, acceptance, even if it is conditional or final acceptance from the universities. Uh, we are having uh, eligibility checks that will be by June text. And by July 2021, there will be um, a lot of interviews and technical uh, evaluation to the proposal submitted by the participants. And I have to clear a point is that uh, usually the, uh, the rank of the uh, hosting university is considered um, as one of the major factors to give the scholarship, uh, along with the um, the protocols which is being signed with such universities that give and like an, 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 um, an plus for, uh, for the participant as he's going to be evaluated, of course, by um, the hosting university uh, professors. However, once we finish our interviews and technical uh, review to the proposal, you, we finally get the results by August 2021. Here's how we move around a little bit after uh, finishing uh, the results. The first step from the right is to deliver the results to ECP. To ECP, which um, is our cultural bureau, the Egyptian Culture and Education Bureau. In uh, currently, of course, uh, we are talking about uh, Canada, so it will be the one in Montreal. Once we, we finish the results, we send all um, successful candidates, we send them directly with all their uh, files and um, all their uh, information to uh, ECEP as to start the placement procedures. Of course, ECEP started negotiating with the hosting university. Uh, try to fix the uh, situation, uh, try to find uh, all the research fees requested to fulfill um, the PhD or the master or the post trade. And later on, the participant has to fulfill, uh, of course, the ECP sends a uh, financial support letter to the hosting university. The participant has to finish the requirement for the having the final acceptance. Once the ECP confirms the final acceptance to CDM, CDM starts to prepare the traveling procedures uh, for all participants. So later on, we finalize and uh, the pre-travel orientation and the required courses well, as well as the paperwork, so we can prepare our participant to travel. Then we dispatch our participant to the hosting university. That was the, the flow of for uh, giving us the chance. And here is the communications, uh, our website, and uh, the email, our LinkedIn, and of course, our YouTube channel.
Dr. Ahmed. Thank you, Mr. Ishtam, for this uh, presentation. Uh, now I would like to welcome uh, Professor Ahmed Fauzi, the culture attache and the director of the Egyptian culture and educational office uh, in Montreal. Professor Fauzi will take us on a journey through the role of the Egyptian culture and educational office in Montreal. Uh, please, uh, Dr. Fauzi, welcome, and yes, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. <clears throat> Uh, on behalf of the Egyptian Cultural and Educational Bureau in Canada, it is with my tremendous pleasure that I welcome you to such an important educational event and to thank you for being with us today. I am Dr. Ahmed Fauzi, the Cultural Attaché and Director of the Bureau. I would like to express my deepest thanks to Dr. Ashraf El Azizi head of the Egyptian Cultural Affairs and Missions Sector, Dr. Haysam Hamza, head of the Missions Sector, Mr. Hisham Mustafa, General Director of the Missions Sector, and all other colleagues within the sector for their continuous support and fruitful collaboration. Special thanks to Dr. Ahmed Haikel and all other colleagues working in the Egyptian Cultural Bureau for their wonderful efforts. I would like also to express my gratitude to the University of Alberta, our esteemed partner, represented today by Mr. Dan Frederick, Manager Sponsored Student Program and Ms. Nicole Dewart, Senior Coordinator, Sponsored Student Program. For such an awesome collaboration and for being with us today. A big thank you to our PhD student, Ms. Lubna Khalil, who volunteered to participate in today's presentation. Within Canada, University of Alberta is ranked number five and worldwide it is ranked number 119 according to QS. Let me share with you now a presentation about the role of our bureau. Our bureau was established in Montreal in the year 1986. It's currently located on the 10th floor in one plus Ville Marie. It used to be on the 19th floor in the same building till October 2015. The main building, which is one plus Ville Marie, was built in 1962. It is 188 meters and 47 story office tower. Actually, our bureau has two main key role aspects, educational and cultural. In terms of educational, our bureau represents the Egyptian Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research in Canada. We aim to conduct agreements with esteemed Canadian universities, we tend to follow up on our Egyptian scholars in Canadian universities and schools, and we do some kind of authentication of educational documents for our Egyptian scholars. In terms of the cultural role, our office arranges uh, a number of Egyptian cultural events in order to reflect the Egyptian cultural image within Canada. Before talking about our vision and mission, I have to tell you that we always work under the umbrella of Egypt's vision 2030. This is our guide line. This sense, our vision is to become 
Egypt's preeminent cultural and educational hub in Canada. In terms of our mission, we are a team passionately dedicated to fostering Egyptian cultural, educational, and scientific relations with our partners in Canada. Our values are imagination, collaboration, and determination. Our team, Dr. Ahmed Haikal, cultural attaché, Mrs. Heba Elmansi, administrative and financial attaché, Mr. Mustafa Shakib, executive secretary, Mrs. Marie Khouri, executive secretary, and myself, Dr. Ahmed Fauzi, cultural attaché and director. Thank you very much, and we hope that you enjoy today's educational event. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fauzi. And uh, now uh, I will leave the floor to the University of Alberta uh, to start um, the introduction to the university. So then, it's your floor. Oh, Dan, I think you're muted. Thank you, Nicole. Um, thank you so much. Um, I want to start by saying how grateful uh, Nicole and I are for this opportunity to have a chance to speak with uh, Egyptian students who are thinking about studying in Canada. And I also want to thank uh, my colleagues at the Egyptian Cultural Bureau in Montreal, Dr. Ahmed Haikel, Dr. Um, Ahmed Fauzi, and of course, our, our old friend Mustafa. Um, I've been working here at the University of Alberta as the uh, manager of the sponsored student program for, I guess it's going to be almost 13 years now. And when I started in 2008, our agreement with the Egyptian Ministry of Higher Education was brand new. And uh, over the, the past almost 13 years, we've welcomed a lot of Egyptian students to the University of Alberta, and we are always interested in recruiting more of them. Uh, our professors at the University of Alberta love to, um, to welcome graduate students from Egypt. They say nothing but good things about our Egyptian students, and they always encourage Nicole and I to find more of them and encourage them to choose the University of Alberta. And um, over the past 13 years, it's been a real pleasure to work with um, the staff and the cultural attaches at the Egyptian Cultural Bureau in Montreal. They've been a great help to us and we definitely appreciate it. So what I want to do today is to provide uh, an overview of the University of Alberta um, but not only that, I'll talk a little bit about studying in Canada and, and why think if you're thinking about studying in Canada, it's a good choice. Um, I'll run through part of this presentation, then I'll pass it over to Nicole and, and Lubna will join in as well with her perspective. And then when we're finished, we will have uh, time remaining to answer any questions that you might have. So one of the first questions that we often get asked is where are we located? So the University of Alberta is located in the city of Edmonton, which is the capital city of the province of Alberta, and it's located in the western side of Canada. We are relatively closer to Vancouver than we are to places like Toronto, Ottawa, or Montreal, uh, those cities are uh, around 4,000 kilometers to the east of us. Next slide, please. So if you're thinking about Canada, um, I strongly encourage it. The country is, as you know, very large. Um, we're the second largest country in the world. Egypt could fit into Canada 10 times. Um, but we have a very small population relative to our size, um, only 37.5 million people. 
So there's lots of room and we welcome uh, people from Egypt to come. The country is officially bilingual, which means that our official languages are English and French, but you can find people here who speak more than 200 different languages, certainly including Arabic. And just so that you know, uh, the province of Alberta is predominantly an English speaking province and the University of Alberta is an English speaking institution. Um, we do have a Francophone faculty. If you are really interested to study in French, you have that option at the University of Alberta. But if you don't speak French, don't worry. You don't need to speak French at all in order to live and, and be successful in uh, Alberta. The country of Canada is unique in some ways, I think, because it's a country that is really made up of people who come from all over the world. Currently, one in every six Canadians is an immigrant who was born outside of Canada. And our country really um, takes pride in the diversity of our population. You will find in any major Canadian city, including Edmonton, uh, people who come from all over the world. Uh, if, if you walk down the street, you'll see people from Asia, from Africa, from Latin America, uh, certainly from Europe as well, the Middle East. You see uh, people who dress in different ways. You hear people speaking different languages. It's very common. And um, I like to say that if you decide to come and study at the University of Alberta, you know, if you're living in, in Edmonton, you won't really feel like you are an outsider because as I say, most people in Canada come from someplace else. We have in Canada around 100 universities and almost all of them are public institutions. And that just means that um, the funding comes primarily from the governments in Canada and the quality is assured uh, by the governments of Canada. And so you'll find that among Canadian universities, um, there's, a, there's a sort of a standard of excellence, um, I would say, which means that you, you can't go wrong if you decide to study at a Canadian university. Uh, yes, the University of Alberta is ranked among the top uh, research universities in the country, but, um, the difference that separates us from our other institutions in Canada, I would say, is generally not that big. Um, really, any Canadian university you might choose to study in is going to offer an excellent high quality level of education. So the city where we are located is Edmonton, uh, the capital of the province of Alberta. It's a city of about 1.5 million people which in Canada makes it one of the major cities. It's quite clean and safe and has a relatively low cost of living as compared to places like Vancouver or Toronto where um, costs can be a little bit higher. The province of Alberta is in many ways, I think one of the nicest places in Canada to live. Um, the overall population of the province is 4 million people. And it tends to be um, one of the wealthier provinces in Canada because it is home to most of Canada's oil and gas resources. As a result, if you choose to study in Edmonton, um, you would benefit, for example, from receiving free health care. Um, the same free health care that I have and my family gets, you would be entitled to as well, um, which just means if you need to go to the doctor or the hospital, you go and you show your health care card and they don't ask you to pay anything. In other Canadian provinces, there is a, a fee for those services. But more importantly, I would say, I think uh, Alberta is one of the most beautiful places in Canada. We are home to Canada's Rocky Mountains, um, which are a short drive away from Edmonton. And if you like being outdoors, spending time in nature, um, Alberta is really the place to be in Canada. Uh, here are just a few of the highlights um, that I wanna to point to about the university. You can see that our student population 
is over 40,000. Um, and currently we are about uh, just under 20% of that being international students from 156 different countries around the world. Um, as was mentioned earlier, we are, have some of our programs are among the top ranked in the world, um, but the list of programs that we offer is quite extensive. We are also particularly well ranked amongst Canadian universities in terms of graduate employment. And I mention that because it's a good indicator of the way that the University of Alberta's reputation can help you if you are a graduate from the University of Alberta. Our graduates tend to have um, a really excellent chances at finding uh, work in their field of study within six months after they graduate. We're number two in Canada based on that. The university itself is home to some world-class facilities for teaching and research. Um, it's quite a large campus. We've got, I think, almost 100 different buildings, um, including the Canada's National Institute for Nanotechnology and Nanofabrication, We've got a, a new center for interdisciplinary science, a new health academy uh, clinic. We've got more than 400 different research labs, one of the largest teaching hospitals in Canada, and the second largest library collection of any university in Canada as well. And again, that's um, an indicator of the level and the quality of research that happens at the University of Alberta. So we have 18 different faculties. And here you can see the list. Underneath each of these faculties, there will be other uh, academic departments. So if you're thinking about the program that you want to study and you don't see it, on this list, please be aware that we've got about 75 academic departments. Um, it's just a, a long list that we, we didn't want to fill up a slide with. Um, but if you have questions after about whether a certain program exists at the University of Alberta, Nicole and I would be happy to answer those. So I'll just go through a few of the larger faculties at the University of Alberta and provide some quick highlights. Certainly we are well known internationally for our programs related to the health sciences and our faculty of medicine and dentistry is one of the largest that we have. Um, it's got 20 departments, 15 centers and research institutes. And we've developed over the years strong reputations in areas like diabetes research, neuroscience. Certainly virology is, is quite well known. Um, this year, uh, we were, uh, sorry, last year, we were fortunate to win um, the Nobel Prize for medicine. Uh, our professor, Dr. Michael Houghton, um, was awarded that for his research on vaccines related to the uh, hepatitis C. Uh, disease. We're number six in the world for transplantation research and our studies and research related to cardiovascular medicine are, are well ranked as well. We have uh, the University of Alberta's School of Business is one of the top four business schools in the world, um, sorry, in Canada, and is ranked within the top hundred in the world. Our MBA program, Master of Business Administration, uh, has a strong reputation, particularly in some of these specialized areas like energy finance, innovation and entrepreneurship, um, public sector and healthcare management, and others. We also have um, a Faculty of Agricultural, Life and Environmental Sciences. And here's where you find our programs related to agriculture and the food business, um, but also to nutrition and food science. These are programs that are uh, always in high demand. We have a department of renewable resources. 
Um, and one of the specialized areas of expertise there is in land reclamation, which refers to efforts to repair the damage to land and water, in fact, um, that are caused by extractive industries like oil and gas or mining. Our forestry program is amongst the best in the world. And we also have kind of a unique social science slash science program on resource economics and environmental sociology as well. Our faculty of engineering is again, one of the largest at the University of Alberta. And it's perhaps the one that our university is maybe best, best known internationally for. Um, there's many specializations that we offer in engineering, including biomedical, chemical and materials engineering, civil and environmental, computer, electrical, mechanical engineering, engineering management, we've got mining engineering and petroleum. And those last two are amongst the, the top ranked programs of their kind uh, in North America and in the world. Our Faculty of Science, uh, again, is one of the largest. Um, it's, it's very popular with uh, students coming from all over the world who are interested in any of the seven departments that we offer, including biology, chemistry, computing science, earth and atmospheric sciences, mathematical and statistical sciences, physics and psychology. And I would point out in, in particular that the University of Alberta right now is, is amongst the highest ranked universities worldwide for uh, our research in artificial intelligence, in geology, and in paleontology. So um, overall, if, you, if you're looking at the full list of masters and PhD programs that we offer, the list has more than 500 uh, available programs, and it's, it's a lot. Um, I can't go over all of them during this presentation, but I've provided here the link to the website on our, um, on our, our University of Alberta website, where you can find uh, particular programs. You just need to type in the name of the program you're looking for in the search bar, and um, it will bring up the relevant results for you. But again, after this presentation, if you've got any questions, we'll do our best to answer them. And at this point, I want to turn it over to my colleague, Nicole, who will continue the presentation. Yeah, actually, I'm going to turn it over to Lovna. Uh, I believe Lovna is going to do the next few slides. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, so U of A presents or offers many types of uh, supports and services for students. For academic support, you will find Student Success Center and Center for Writers. And also there is Student uh, Accessibility Services, Health Center, Pharmacy and Health and Dental Insurance, Counseling in All Means and Recreation Facilities. There are also more than 450 plus students groups, including the Egyptian Students Association, which is a very active group, by the way. Also for uh, social support, Muslim students will find various means of support here, like the uh, Arashid Mosque, which is, by the way, the first in Canada. And there is also a Muslim Students Association, dedicated spaces on campus for prayers, and there are many uh, options for halal at campus cafeterias and some restaurants, and also halal markets and grocery stores all over the town. And for sure, for parents, students, um, there are many uh, services for students with families, like the free Albert Health Care, as Dan mentioned earlier. And also, you can pay more to add your spouse or supplementary dependents and kids. Um, we have free public schooling for children age, up five, age five and up. And there is also an Arabic program in certain public education schools. There is the Edmonton Islamic Academy and daycares on campus, which is not free, but grants are available and uh, is facilitated by the university. Thank you, Nyukal. You can go on. Thank you, Lovna. Okay, so a little bit about uh, housing options. Uh, so students who apply for campus housing before April 30th are guaranteed a spot uh, within our campus housing. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you won't get one if you apply after that date. Um, it's just not guaranteed at that point. There are a variety of accommodation options on campus. 
Um, so there are residences specifically just for grad students. Uh, depending on your budget, you can have a suite to yourself or you can share with other roommates. Um, there is family housing available in one of our residences. Um, it's it's two bedroom suite, so students with or one or two children, uh, can, we can accommodate there. Um, and there's also lots of off campus housing very nearby that we can give students resources in terms of finding those options. There are meal plans available as well. That's an option for students who want to uh, pursue that. And those meal plans, you know, you can access any cafeteria or restaurant on campus with that. Um, and you will find a number of options on campus that um, have a, a variety of uh, meal plans, including halal and vegetarian. Our International Student Services Center is a, a main hub on campus for international students to speak with specialized advisors about, about whatever questions you might have during your studies at the university. So the staff here plan the, the big kind of three day international student orientation at the start of the semester. Um, and that includes an airport pickup and welcome option as well. Uh, there are specialized advisors um, who are trained in Canadian immigration. So you, if you have questions about your study permit or you need to renew your study permit while you are here, there are advisors who can kind of help you through that process. And they're there to answer any questions you might have about academics or just life in general in Edmonton. And they also put on a lot of great programs throughout the year uh, for international students, like our peer support program. So that's where they connect new students with current students, um, you know, someone to kind of guide you through your first year and get to know the city and campus. And we also have an English conversation club that meets once a week as well. In terms of uh, professional development, um, for students who are interested, um, there are opportunities to work as a research assistant or teaching assistant with your supervising professor or within your department. Um, so that might be a good opportunity if you're looking for that experience, especially if you're wanting to return to Egypt to teach at a university in Egypt, this could be great experience for you. And all graduate students at the university um, are required to complete a professional development component to their program. So at the start of you, your program, you kind of create a plan as to what your goals are. And our Faculty of Graduate Studies puts on a number of workshops, conferences, uh, things to kind of develop your skills and work towards your professional development goals. Now, in terms of the type of graduate degrees we offer, I'll give a little bit of an overview of each. So for our master's degrees, um, the, I'll start with the course-based master's, which is, it's just that, it's you take courses for the majority of the program and you have a small final project at the end. Uh, most course-based masters, you know, depending what department you're with, can be completed in you know, one to one and a half years usually. Uh, whereas a thesis-based master's, you still do some courses, fewer courses, but those are meant to help you uh, prepare for your upcoming research. So you're going to do a much bigger, more extensive research project and then write a thesis at the end. And so most master's degrees, uh, thesis-based take two to two and a half years, um, kind of depending on how you progress in your research. Now for a doctoral degree, it's kind of the same type of structure. You still do some coursework, particularly in your first one or two years uh, to kind of help you with your research um, and, and writing your thesis defense at the end. And so uh, most doctoral degrees take a minimum of four years to complete. And admission to a doctoral um, program, most departments require that you have a, a master's degree in that uh, same area. Now, some things to consider before you apply for a grad program. 
Um, are you required to find a supervisor before you apply? So if you're wanting to do a course-based master's, this typically isn't a required step for you. But if your goal is to do research as part of your, your master's program, and especially for a doctoral program, most departments do require that you identify a professor and communicate with that professor about supervising your program here. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation. Um, we get a lot of students asking about the GRE or the GMAT test. Um, I would say the majority of programs at the University of Alberta do not require this, but it is uh, big in programs like business or economics and um, you know, programs like uh, psychology at the University of Alberta as well require a GRE. Um, like I said, the vast majority don't require this, but it's good to check uh, the website of the department that you're wanting to apply to. Uh, another thing to consider is start dates. Um, here at the University of Alberta and, and most universities in Canada, the main start date is in September. Uh, some programs only have a September start date. Um, however, there are some programs that offer January admissions as well. Um, so again, it, it kind of depends on which program and department you're specifically wanting to study in, and you can check their website. Uh, another question we often get is about conditional admissions. And what this means is, for example, maybe you are just slightly below the English language requirement, um, but you need an admission letter to apply for the scholarship from the ministry. Um, some departments will consider a conditional admission, meaning there will be some type of statement on your admission letter that you will need to meet that language requirement before you start your program. So some departments are uh, flexible about that. Um, some are quite firm about you meeting all of the, the requirements before you apply. So usually it, you can find that information on the department website, but if you're unsure, uh, you can contact us and we can help you navigate that. Now, in terms of admission requirements, um, these requirements on this slide are very kind of general minimum standards that our Faculty of Graduate Studies sets. However, some departments have higher requirements, so that's something to keep in mind, um, making sure to check the department website. Um, so the minimum uh, that we're going to look for is a GPA of three out of four, and we're only going to look at your last two years of full-time studies. So I'd be equivalent of 75% for the three out of four. Um, so if you did not great in your first year of your university studies, that's okay. We're just gonna focus on those most recent two years. Uh, for the English requirements, uh, most students submit an IELTS or TOEFL. So we look for a 6.5 on the IELTS and uh, a 90 on the TOEFL. We do understand that right now, uh, the situation with COVID, there are many English testing centers that are closed. Um, you're not able to do them in person right now. If that's the case for you, uh, we are currently accepting the online Duolingo test as well. So a score of 115 on that Duolingo test um, is something that you can consider as well. So in terms of documents that we typically want to see um, when you're applying online, uh, your CV, we look for your university transcripts and degree certificates. So this is for any program that you would have studied at a post-secondary institution. And for those documents, we uh, need to see the original language. So what it was originally issued as and an official English translation. Uh, that translation doesn't necessarily need to come from your home university. That can be done by any official certified translator um, in your town or city. Uh, your English test score. Uh, you don't have to have the testing center send those to us. You can just upload a PDF of the official results. A statement of research interest, which I will talk about uh, in a bit. Uh, we ask for three references. Uh, so when you are completing your online application, we ask for the names and emails of your references. And then once you submit that application, 
uh, a form will be sent to those three references to complete and, and send back to us. And those can be a combination of, of academic references and, and work references. Uh, another thing you'll need to include is confirmation from a professor at the university who has agreed to supervise your program if you are admitted. So again, this is just for those research-based programs, not for the course-based. And like I said, some departments might have additional requirements. So like business or economics, they will want to see you upload that GMAT or GRE exam. Or if you are applying to a program like English literature or modern languages, they might want to see a uh, writing sample as well. Now I had mentioned earlier uh, about the need to find a supervising professor at the university if you are wanting to do a research-based program and, uh, or a doctoral program. So when you are emailing a professor, um, I always suggest you attach your CV, your transcripts, your statement of intent, and then just suggest to the professor a time to, to meet via video chat or phone to kind of discuss the opportunity further. However, if you are planning to um, apply for a scholarship from the ministry, as per our uh, agreement between the ministry and the University of Alberta, uh, you can contact me and I can kind of help you with that process. That way I can reach out to the professor because many don't know about our agreement or the scholarship. So I can make sure the professor uh, is aware of that uh, possibility. Now I've mentioned writing uh, a statement of research intent. So um, what that is, it's a, a one to two page document um, where you're gonna talk about things like why you want to work with that particular professor, what about their research interests you? So what kind of drew you to that professor? Um, what, why, were, why were they your first choice? Um, you want to make sure you touch on how your research interests are related. There has to be some type of connection there, especially to their current research, what they're currently working on. Um, how your academic background and your experiences are going to be beneficial for that professor and their research group. Uh, and what your goals are after completing uh, graduate studies at the university. And one uh, recommendation I have is not to write one general statement uh, that you then send to all professors. Um, you know, if you, you know, professors get a lot of those. If you really want to catch the attention of a professor, it's helpful if you can really tailor that statement and target it specifically to them and their research area. Okay, and as mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we do have a longstanding relationship with the Egypt Ministry of Higher Education, and we do have a co-funding agreement uh, with them. And so for that co-funding agreement, it is uh, two years for a master's and up to four years for a PhD. Uh, for the master's, I'll just highlight that it's the thesis-based uh, master's only, not the course-based program where there is that uh, co-funding available. And then uh, a little bit about the sponsored student program. So uh, this is the program that Dan and myself work under. So we uh, are a specialized program specifically for um, scholarship students, um, such as those from the Egypt Ministry of Education. Um, we have dedicated staff to provide service um, to those scholarship applicants and recipients. Um, so we can kind of help you with that entire application process, finding a supervising professor, and um, kind of guiding you through your transition to the university and Edmonton. And so if this is uh, you, if you are planning to apply for the scholarship, uh, feel free to contact me and I can kind of guide you through those steps. And yes, this is where uh, we can be contacted. So uaissp at ualberta.ca. So uh, feel free, um, you know, after today, we'll, we'll go through some questions. Uh, but if you think of other things afterwards, feel free to email us and we'll be uh, happy to help. 
thank you, Nicole, and thank you, Dan, for this wonderful presentation as well for Lopna. Uh, and now we will start the question and answer session. So there's a few questions now on the channel. The first question from Norhan Mansi. She asks, should I have an acceptance letter from the professor in the University of Alberta before applying for a master or PhD? If you are going to apply for uh, the mission scholarship, for the Egyptian mission scholarship, yes, sure, you, know, you need this uh, uh, acceptance letter. So as Nicole said in her presentation, she can assist you and help you in uh, getting this acceptance letter. Yeah. Ahmed Yusri, what is the minimum GPA required for the PhD scholarship and the IELTS score? I think uh, Nicole, uh, through her presentation, um, mentioned that uh, required for the IELTS is uh, 6.5. Hisham um, al-Bahiri, can I receive a participant certificate, please? Um, uh, okay, for that, we will see if we can do such a um, participant certificate. Uh, Norhan and Mansi, what is the least mandatory score of the IELTS? Is there is a list mandatory score, Nicole? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, is there a list mandatory score of IELTS? Uh, a mandatory IELTS score, like the, the uh, 6.5 or? Yeah, this one, huh? the, the question is what's the least, uh, the minimum uh, required score uh, for IELTS? Yeah, yeah, 6.5 is the, is the absolute minimum. Yeah. Uh, there is another question. What about, uh, I have applied for Alberta twice and unfortunately was unsuccessful. I need uh, how to get acceptance and how I received such a result. Uh, yeah, yeah, feel free. If you want to email me directly, I can mm -hmm. look into your situation. Um, you know, we can we can see maybe what what happened in previous applications, and maybe if there's some ways to improve future applications. So, if you want to send me, you know, email me documents like, um, you know, your transcripts, your language score, your CV, um, and your statement of intent, then I can take a look at them and and make any suggestions. Okay. Um... Uh, there is another question from Isra Rabia. Good evening. I am an assistant lecturer at the Faculty of Language and uh, at Al-Azhar University, Department of English Language. Can I apply for a PhD scholarship? So the, actually they asked about is there is a department for English language here. Yes, yeah, we do have a department. Uh, it's called uh, English and Film Studies, um, but they they have a specialization on, on English literature and they do have a PhD program, yes. Okay. Um, is there is a program for uh, visiting medical professor from abroad? Visiting medical professors? Oh, for, for medical, yeah, for medical professors, yeah. Um, I'm not aware of any specific program that exists for that. It may be something that we can negotiate with our faculty of medicine and dentistry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do have a lot of uh, foreign doctors who are coming to the University of Alberta to do residency and fellowship training. Um, but if you wanted to come just as a visiting professor, um, that usually is possible. Um, but in order to do that, you first have to identify a professor at the University of Alberta who would be willing to host you, and then they can issue an invitation for you to come as a visiting professor. Okay. okay. Uh, this is another question from Abdel Minam Shabrawi. Are there a chance for remote online degrees and short period three months of stay in Canada? You offer online degrees in Alberta? Uh, well, everything is, you know, because of COVID, everything is online now. But typically, under normal circumstances, um, we don't really have many um, online degree programs. There, there isn't that option. Okay. 
So he should be uh, here in Canada, yeah. Correct, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, Dr. Ahmed, but however, uh, don't forget the Supreme Council of Universities. Uh, he asked about if, if there is a, uh, a program outside the mission, uh, the mission scholarship, yeah. Yeah, but uh, the, the who asked, uh, he has to present back to the Supreme Council of Universities decisions that uh, mm -hmm. there is certain limits of online sessions um, in the certificate program. Uh, so the maximum limit is 40% of the whole PhD. So he has to recheck again uh, before starting online um, courses to see if uh, his uh, certificate is going to be equalized when upon his return back. Um, Isla also asked about is there is a, a postdoctoral program uh, in the university or is she should contact the supervisor directly? Yeah, there are opportunities uh, to come as a, a postdoctoral fellow. Um, I usually typically encourage students to um, or professors to contact the University of Alberta professor directly that you would like to, to work with during your postdoc, because they will be the ones to be able to tell you if they have space for a postdoc um, and, and uh, potentially some extra funding for that as well. Um, so yeah, so just uh, reach out to the professor that you would like to do your postdoc with. Okay, there is a question for uh, Mr. Hisham. Um... Uh, did there is an age limit to postdoctoral research as I am uh, 52 years and I am a full professor? Uh, well, I'm sorry, uh, Madame Nicole, uh, would you like to answer? Uh, well, actually for CDM announcement, uh, the maximum limit age is 55 now for full professors, so he can apply, sure. Yeah. So Alberta, is there any restriction for postdoctoral age? Uh, there's there's no age limit, but it does need to be done within five years of completing the PhD. Uh huh. Okay. So it's uh, five years. Uh, okay. So to be, to be considered as a postdoctor, so he can come as a visitor professor. Uh, okay. So it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think the eyelids we we answer this answers for question and. Okay, can I, um, I think someone asked about if he is a disabled student, he can he ask about can medical student apply for CCZ uh, include clinical or lab uh, trials? Oh, okay, it's a medical student, yeah. Can a medical student apply for a CCZ include a clinic or lab uh, trials? Uh-huh, uh, so he can deal with you during his PhD for medical student with a patient in Alberta? So my understanding is that um, if you're applying for a master's or a PhD in any of the health sciences, um, in most cases, if not all cases, it's considered to be a research-based degree. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't normally allow international students to have access directly to patients uh, mm -hmm. unless they are already licensed in Canada as, as a licensed health practitioner, like a nurse or a doctor. Otherwise, you, you, can, you can do research in the lab only. Uh -huh. uh, okay. You answer this question. Uh, a lot of students ask about Nicole email. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll I'll put it in the chat again. If you can provide it in the chat, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there a specific program uh, for um, a scholarship in Alberta, funded by Alberta so from the Alberta University? There's a lot of question about this. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of depends on the department that you're wanting to apply to. So every department has different levels of funding for graduate students. Um, admission just becomes more competitive if you're then competing for funding from the department as well. Um, so 
you know, if if you are considered a, a competitive applicant, they they might make you a funding offer if you are admitted. Um, but there's no um, set kind of amount or, or minimum, it kind of varies from department to department. So you can check the department website you'd like to apply to, to see what their funding levels are like. Um, and, and, you know, some might not offer full funding, it might just be partial. Um, so it, again, it kind of depends on the department. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one student asked about uh, the facility offered by Alberta to disabled students. Uh, facilities to receive students to disable disabled students disabled. Ah, yeah so we do have an office of um, accessibility services uh, so that's specifically to support students who might need some accommodations um, you know to assist with if it's you know physical disabilities or if they need extra support in terms of exams or writing, there, are, there is an office to kind of assist students with those accommodations. Okay. Um, so there's a question also from Mayar Ala, who asking is uh, there is a master for physical education? I think it's at Belta is very famous by sport. I don't know if it's physical education um, it's like sport or physical education for. Yeah, we, we offer both. So yeah, our, our programs in you know sport sciences are within the top 10 in the world. So we have um, a faculty of kinesiology, um, sport and recreation. Um, so that's kind of just focusing on the sports component. But we do have a faculty of education as well that's completely separate. And they do have a, a specialization um, in, in, you know, there are professors that specialize in physical education there. Okay. Uh, and actually ask about is there is any possible way to finish the PhD in less than four years? Uh, it's certainly difficult, um, not impossible. Um, you know, it's it's quite rare to, to have students do that. Um, I know, you know, it's it's common in some other countries, but in Canada, four years is typically the minimum. Um, you know, if you know, discussing it, yeah, discussing it with your supervising professor, you might be able to come up with a, a condensed plan. So it's kind of up to you and the U Alberta professor to kind of determine how long your, your research is going to take. Yeah. I finished in UK in three years, but yes. <laughs> in Canada, quite different. Yeah. <laughs> there is no comprehensive exams and no courses yeah, in the UK. We start the research directly. Right. Okay. And then I ask, what is the maximum age for applying for master degree? Is there a maximum age for applying for master degree, or is open? No, we have we have no age requirements. Okay. Uh, however, uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, no, for, and, uh, yeah, from a bit limited. You can ask you can, you know. <laughs> uh, The maximum age for the uh, the participant to apply for master degree is uh, 30 years old. And uh, uh, that in case of uh, their, uh, their home institution approved to be uh, granted for another two years, that's fine. So the maximum is 32 years. Okay. Um, Muhammad Abbas asked, what is the co-founding scholarship from Alberta, Egypt? Is there is a website for this? There is agreement, Muhammad, between uh, Alberta University and the mission sector in Egypt uh for lowering the fees to domestic so this is what are talking about this agreement yeah so we call we consider alberta as our partner to do that we, we don't charge our uh, student as international but they consider our student as a domestic student okay what is the possibility for cooperation between the your university and the banha in scientific research and student exchange as well as a dual degree, is there an opportunity to do a dual degree in Alpersha with other uni Egyptian universities back at home? Um, Dan, I'm not sure if you are aware of any dual degree programs between Egypt and Alberta. I don't believe that there are any right now. No. 
is there is possibility to do that? Do the double degree between Alberta and the other university over the world? Um, it's theoretically possible. Um, to COVID, we start to look for two plus two programs and saying maybe the student takes the courses online in Egypt mm -hmm. and they come after they do the, ex the comprehensive exam to Canada or doing the comprehensive exam even in Egypt and come to start research directly. Is this, this, this approach is possible? I would say it's possible. Um, I would say that um, it takes uh, quite a bit of time to put a program like that in place and you have to have the support of at least one of our faculties at the University of Alberta. It's mm. something that we would definitely be interested to explore, um, but I don't think it's going to be an immediate solution to any of the students uh, here today. Yeah, okay. There's a lot of questions about the dual degree. Okay, let's see more. Okay. Uh, there's a question for Mr. Hisham. I am a teaching assistant on a child care leave. Can I still apply? Uh, well, unfortunately, Dr. Ahmed, uh, uh, whoever on leave uh, is out of duty. We consider him as out of duty. So even for uh, uh, child care uh, leaves, that doesn't give them a chance, I mean, to apply. Uh, we always emphasizing on the on-duty uh, scholars who are eligible for being um, eligible for being, uh, having the uh, full scholarships from uh, CDF. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are questions about the IELTS we mentioned, okay. There is another question for Mr. Hisham as well. I am administrator. Do I have to spend a year in my job before applying for the mission scholarship? Uh, well, actually, we give you a chance. I mean, to apply, that's fine. But however, you cannot leave before uh, being promoted as a lecturer. OK. Um... Okay. Uh, here's a question from Muhammad. Uh, is it acceptable for engineering physics master student to apply for science physics PhD? Nicole? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a possibility. It kind of depends on which professor you want to do some research with. And then that professor will kind of determine if your background is a good fit for um, what they are doing in their research group. Um, so yeah, I'd encourage you to contact the, the professors in, in physics and science and see if they would be open to that. Someone asked about if there is any kind of Islamic history um, program in Alberta. I don't uh, know if you have some kind of this uh, program. So we don't offer a specific program in Islamic history. Um, we do have courses in religious studies and Middle East uh, studies as well. Um, but it's not a specific program in Islamic history. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say that if you're interested in studying in Canada, you would find stronger programs in Islamic history at McGill University in Montreal or the University of Toronto. Good answer on this. Uh, there is a question from Hagar. For full funded uh, PhD scholar, how can I get the fund from CDM? 
and should I get the fund before applying for the university? This is for uh, Mr. Hisham. Uh, well, uh, I have to say this is a very funny uh, question uh, because you have to pass by all the interviews and technical reviews. And uh, if you are successful, okay, of course, you are going to have the scholarship. Otherwise, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a competitive uh, um, announcement. So everyone in Egypt, especially for the scholars, can apply. And of course, there is uh, a lot of uh, challenging uh, interviews. By the way, I have to say that uh, one of the main factors uh, to decide to give the scholarship is the hosting university. Uh, Alberta is one of the uh, highest uh, ranking in uh, worldwide, globally. So it is a very good chance, I mean, for, uh, for participants to share in. Uh, that's one of the things. Secondly, the professor's index uh, uh, and the how um, how he's affecting in, in the global uh, uh, global environmental. Uh, I mean, the, the academic uh, sessions. So um, his ranking as well is considered in choosing uh, the participant uh, through the reviewers. Okay, there is another question for uh, Dan uh, from Ahmed Ali. He asked about if there is any, any available program in uh, food microbiology. So he's working in a food microbiology and he asked me if there is a program for food microbiology. I would say yes. Um, I, I would need to know more about the particular area of specialization before I could say whether that was something that's likely to be in our uh, department of nutrition or whether it falls more under the sciences like biological science or, or where it would fall. But I think we do have that expertise at the University of Alberta. Okay. Uh, there is a question also from Ahmed Shinawi. Does uh, geophysics PhD program have uh, courses in the first year? For sure. I don't see any structural program. I don't know. Daniel, is there a structural program on the department or? This, sorry, I, I missed which, which uh, program this was. About the geophysics PhD program? So the geophysics PhD program, you may not be able to find um, specific information on the website about it. I'm not sure. Um, but generally speaking, it's going to fall into the same pattern as any of our research based PhD programs where students will spend their first year taking courses. Um, usually by their second year, they're preparing for their comprehensive examinations. And then once those are passed, um, the remaining years are spent doing research and writing the PhD thesis. Mm. Okay. Um, Hebatullah asked about if there is a master program in pharmacy uh, science, in the pharmacy science. I'm sure. Yes. Is a yeah, yeah. yeah, we have a faculty of uh, mm. pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences. So it's it's quite large and a diverse range of, of research areas. Mm. Okay, if there is any uh, question we can forward to you. Uh, if I pass some question I don't see. And uh, if you don't kind to answer and send back, we can share with all our students uh, all this question, I will I will record it, okay, and we will answer in detail and send back to you. Okay, uh, to be uh, restricted with the time, uh, thank you for your um, wonderful presentation about Alberta today, and thank you for you all to attend this uh, wonderful meeting and this wonderful uh, webinar with Alberta. And um, we are looking forward to see you in our uh, next webinars tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Uh, so um, the floor now is uh, Professor Ahmed Fauzi to say his uh, goodbye message. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed Hekel. Uh, 
thank you very much uh, to all our guest speakers uh, uh, today. Uh, thank you very much to all the attendees who attended the, today's educational event. And we wish you all the best of luck and success. Thank you very much. I'd just like to say thank you to the organizers. Thank you to the students. We're happy to answer further questions by email at any time. And to, uh, to everyone, I want to say, I wish everyone Ramadan Karim. Thank you, everyone. And we are wishing you all the best. Uh, as CDM is looking now for more applications to apply. So we are waiting your application. Thank you very much for uh, ECAP. And uh, hopefully uh, we gave you very good uh, uh, information nowadays. Thank you. Thank you.